A lot of you have asked about this type of guide, so we're here to show you how to build a cheap or the cheapest mining rig that you possibly can. It seems like many of you have this misconception that a PC for mining is some elusive thing that requires some specialized hardware or a lot of know-how to get going. But honestly, building a mining rig is probably a bit easier and a whole lot cheaper than a normal gaming rig. There are fewer requirements, fewer bottlenecks, and thankfully cheaper parts that you skimp on all around in order to get a mining PC up and going and running profitably. And I want to express up front that when I say cheap as possible, I'm talking about everything excluding the graphics card. I want to help you determine the raw parts cost of the rig before the GPU so you know how much you have left to spend on what's going to actually earn you that crypto coin. So today's video will be the first part in an ongoing series of us showing you how to get a full mining rig set up and managed anywhere from the cheap which we'll be covering today up until a full six card mining rig complete with risers and the like. So be sure to smash that like button and get subscribed if you like this type of content and want us to continue with this series going forward. So let's start with the easiest but also most confusing part of building the mining computer, part selection. I say this is the most confusing because I've seen many of you try to justify certain components in a build that just make no sense. You don't need a Ryzen processor or any coffee like chip to make this work. Heck, you don't even need anything from the last decade to get the most out of your your mining rig. Literally pulling out that old gateway or Dell PC from your parents' basement storage will do you just fine as a starter to your mining PC. The reason for this is that mining with your CPU, no matter what it is, isn't likely to be that profitable either by total amount of profit you can make from it or with regards to its power efficiency. If you're just looking to get the best mining profit, ignoring your CPU is going to be the best bet. This also means that things like motherboard choice and RAM selection are less important when it comes to mining. That doesn't mean they're inconsequential and that you can build a system with 256 kilobytes of RAM with the Pentium 2 though. On average, it appears that most mining programs will take between 100 to 500 megabytes of RAM storage. This means that you could likely get away with like two gigabytes if you're only running one card or are on Linux, but the industry standard happens to be a single stick of four gigabytes of DDR4 since it's usually the latest motherboards that are supporting the most graphics cards. Currently, one of my spare systems running a 1080 Ti and an RX 480 uses about 1.8 gigabytes of the total four gigabytes to run both of those cards on two different mining programs. Obviously, depending on what else you have installed on your system, you might need more or less, but I'd recommend four if you're planning on running Windows 10 in any capacity just to give you plenty of headroom. Obviously, if you have DDR4, you can't go below four, so you're just gonna have to live with that. But if you're running a Core 2 Duo on an LGA 775 socket with four gigabytes of RAM from an OEM PC that your parents bought way back in the day, you're honestly pretty close to being set on getting started with mining. The only thing that I would beg and plead with you to spend money on is getting rid of the trash power supplies that are typically included with those PCs. Picking up something like an inexpensive Corsair or Cooler Mess 350 watt can go a long way here depending on the GPU that you're going to get. The last thing you want is to put the system under long-term stress and cause the PSU to catch on fire because that is what can happen. Friends, don't let friends use bad power supplies. Okay, but what if you don't have a spare old PC lying around? What if you want to pick up new parts? What should you do? Well, the ideal solution is for you to go as low end as possible on most of the components to save cash for your GPUs. That means likely buying used parts in order to get things at a discount. But if you're looking to make sure you have a warranty on everything, here's what I would buy. Firstly, the CPU. I'd grab an Intel Celeron G3900 or 3930. These things are going for around $40 in the US and just around 670 Rand here in South Africa. Two cores, two threads, three year warranty, but most importantly, low power consumption. The goal for building a mining rig is that you want everything consuming as little extra power as possible. The 51 watt TDP Celeron likely won't be doing anything in the background while you're mining, so it's as good a choice as any. Now for motherboards, there's one of two choices that you can go with. You can either one, buy the cheapest H110 motherboard out there to just cut costs, you can grab one of those for about $50 in the US or about a thousand Rand here in South Africa. This will help to make sure that your return on investment time is as short as possible as you're minimizing the costs. Or you can too try to buy a motherboard that costs a bit more but will give you more expandability in the future in case you want to upgrade to more mining cards. Now you can get something like this Gigabyte H110 which has a bunch of PCI Express ports for future cards and you'll be able to purchase things called riser cables that will allow you to plug several graphics cards into these slots. Or you can simply make sure that you grab a board that has a few extra pieces PCIe connectors, in addition to the main one that you'll use for your primary graphics card, like this $70 MSI motherboard. Which route you choose to go will be up to you and what your future plans are for mining. 
If you're just cool with a single card system, then the cheapest motherboard will work for you. If you want more expandability, you can look into the more pricier options that can give you more freedom as you have more money to spend on mining in the future. And now we've already covered RAM a bit. You can get by with the cheapest DDR4 that you can find, like this Hynix stick for $44. You'll likely be fine with this unless you're going to be springing for an RX Vega mining rig, in which case you'll want to make sure you have a minimum of 8 gigabytes to enable the high bandwidth cache controller on those cards. But you're not likely to grab one of those cards if you're watching this video. Now for storage, there's nothing wrong with grabbing the cheapest hard drive you can find and slapping it in the system. However, as previously mentioned, one of the goals of mining is to minimize the power draw of the system as that will influence the profits that you can get out of the machine unless you're completely solar powered or wind powered or renewable energy or whatever. That's why many people decide to pick up a cheap solid state drive like this ADATA 128 gigabyte for $50. SSDs draw less power than hard drives so it'll reduce the overall power consumption of your rig but also give you much faster loading times into the operating system when you have to reboot the system. Now for the case for your mining rig, Here's where we differ from a normal gaming PC build. While you could just find the best $20 case on Newegg, the honest truth is that for mining, you don't really need a chassis to hold your parts in. One, you'll get better temperatures by going open air, and then two, if you get serious and buy more GPUs down the line, you're going to want to buy an open air case like this one to fit all of the graphics cards in, but still provide decent airflow. That's why I would recommend for the cheapest single card rig that you can make, just run the PC on the box that the motherboard comes in. It won't look the greatest and it'll be a mess of wires unless you're really good with zip ties, but it's the best option for cutting corners since the whole point of building a mining rig is to make it as profitable as possible. And now the last two selections go hand in hand, your power supply and your graphics card. Depending on which graphics card you want to get will determine how much power you need for your system. You can buy exactly what you need or you can buy more than what you need for future upgradability. But if you buy the power supply for exactly what you need right now, you're not screwed for the future. For upgrading for a more car mining rig down the line you can just combine two lower wattage power supplies to allow you to power more graphics cards with a simple adapter again each choice depends on what you want to make now and how much cash you have available but let's say you get the most popular graphics card on the market right now for mining the rx 580 you can get by with a 400 and 450 watt power supply if you want to cover your bare power needs but the suggested would be about 500 watts to make sure you can cover your overclocking headroom so let's add up all the costs to the parts that we've mentioned so far and see how much cash is going to cost us to build the cheapest mining rig possible. For the CPU, it's $40. For the motherboard, it's $50. For the RAM, it's $44. For the SSD, it's $50. And for the power supply, let's say it's a 500 watt, which you can get for $38. That means your raw parts to start a mining rig will cost you about $222 before the graphics card. In South Africa, your base to start is 4,150 Rand or the equivalent to $312. If you grab an RX 588 GB for $350 right now, that means a base complete rig will run you $572. With the income of the RX 5 of $3.42 mining electronium right now, that means the entire PC will take 167 days to pay off if you ignore electricity costs. If you include average electric rates of 12 cents per kilowatt hour, that means your payoff period will be a total of just over six months with 186 days. 160 to 180 days and you pay off a full PC at the current profitability of the RX 580. In South Africa, that time is bumped up to 211 days without electric and 240 days with electric pricing included. The initial investment is high and the risk exists that the cryptocurrency values could plummet leaving you with an unprofitable mining PC, but it's certainly a doable endeavor. Picking up an RX 578 gigabyte would cost you about $50 less right now than an RX 580, but you would drop your payoff period to 149 days without electric costs and 163 days after electric costs, since the RX 570 can get very similar hashing rates while also consuming a bit less power. So you're really looking at $225 worth of parts to get started with the cheapest mining rig possible if you're looking to buy everything new with whatever GPU you purchase, really determining how much the total amount will be spent. Obviously, these prices fluctuate quite heavily, especially the RAM pricing as of late, but I think you can get a good picture from this video. And also keep in mind that the more cards that you add to this rig help to pay off the rest of the parts. So two RX 580s will divide the cost of the rest of the system between each other, so each card only has to pay off $111 of the total system cost. And obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you have a spare cheapo system that just needs a RAM and power supply upgrade to get going, then it's definitely a good way to cut corners and reduce your total amount spent. And reducing the total amount spent means that you're that much closer to earning pure profit from your mining PC instead of trying to pay it off. 
The easiest way that most of you can get started with a mining rig though is just by buying a graphics card and plugging it into your already existing system and letting it mine in the background. It'll increase your power consumption and maybe raise the temperature in the case a fair bit, but you can just use your existing PC to make some extra crypto dough. But I hope that the thing that I can communicate the most to you all is that building a mining rig is actually just as simple as building a gaming PC, but instead of trying to squeeze frames for a second out of the computer, you're trying to squeeze out hashes and make sure that the power consumption is as low as it can go without affecting performance. If you want me to cover what it takes to go from a single card rig to a multiple card setup in the future videos, let me know either down in the comments or over on Twitter, I'm at UF Disciple. I'm keen to hear how you all want this to move forward. Also, if you're looking to pick up any parts for a mining rig or a gaming PC, you can use our Amazon affiliate code down in the video description as a way to support our channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but when you click on the link, it gives us a small kickback that goes to making sure that we can make more videos around here. If you're in South Africa though, and looking to pick up some PC parts, Wootware has you covered with their fantastic pricing, great selection, phenomenal customer service. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to woot up your rig. Their link will be in the video description. A big thanks to Wootware because they're the ones who are funding our upcoming mining rig projects and we couldn't be doing this without them whatsoever. So thank you guys. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up there. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.